Hi everyone, it's Sarah a Lovely Day here with another after image story video. As always, if you haven't already seen my other story videos, be sure to check them out first. I'll link the playlist in a card up here somewhere and of course in the description below. So quick recap, last time Lee went to Trebus Hospital to find the missing part that Rem and Rom needed to fix his leg. But instead of finding the part, he followed a man in black and found a silver orb. Oh, and he also bumped into a girl who after picking up the orb collapsed. Kind of strange if you ask me. A few of you were able to figure out that this girl was in fact Rachel. I'm sure many of you are wondering why she responded the way she did, but it'd be no fun if I just told you outright. In order to appreciate exactly what happened to her, we need to experience it through Ray's eyes. And you know what, while we're at it, why not rewind to the beginning of her day? Ray's commute is simple, or rather it should be. Every morning she rolls out of bed, late of course and yet despite that she takes the long way to work sure her studio room is just around the corner from the hospital but with the route ray takes she might as well live on the other side of town in case you've forgotten ray is a government employee at tribus hospital she works exclusively with cynthia to help them learn the behaviors they need to exist alongside humans ray's first workshop starts bright and early at 6 a.m if it weren't for the fact that Ray is a human, she would probably be made to start much, much earlier. Today is a day like any other. As soon as Rachel's feet hit the floor, she is running. And she makes it out the door in record time. Not breaking stride, Ray keeps up this pace on her way around, not even stopping at the traffic lights. She has the path down to a fine art. Now, the bad thing about arriving at work this way is that she has to go through the main entrance with all of the public but it's still better than the alternative. As she runs through the door, Rachel can see that her second class of the day are already sitting at reception. They're all perched awkwardly on the benches. Ray takes a mental note to bring that up in class later as she jogs past them and down the hallway. And then it happens. It's her boss. Damn it. This is exactly what Ray has been trying to avoid. Surely she can see how much of a rush she is in. But rather than move out of the way to let Ray pass, she steps forward to block the way, forcing Ray to stop in her tracks. The lady scolds Ray in a playful tone, kind of like how you'd expect a parent to talk to a child. All the while, Ray's eyes are flitting around the room, desperately trying to avoid making eye contact. This doesn't go unnoticed by her boss, who, after a moment of random bobbing, reaches forward to grab one of Ray's hands. Ray raises her head to look her boss in the eyes and is overcome by a wave of sadness. Sure, her boss may be smiling on the outside, but Ray can see the torment in her eyes. Ray tells the lady that she needs to get to her class and continues down the hallway. By the time Ray gets to her classroom, she is hot and flustered and has slowed down considerably. She strides through the door only to crash into someone coming through from the other side. The collision is audible. Despite Ray having bowled into them with her full weight, the stranger doesn't so much as flinch. Ray takes a step backwards to get a better look at the stranger. It's a man and he honestly looks like he's seen better days. He has bright turquoise hair and is wearing a ragged mismatch of clothes over what looks like sportswear. As Ray moves back, he quickly takes the space as an opportunity to leave. His eyes are locked on the hallway and he doesn't do anything to even acknowledge Ray's existence. She curses at him as he walks away, but he doesn't respond. Turning back to the classroom, reality hits as Ray realizes that her entire class is all there seated and ready waiting for her. She's much later than she thought. At least Cynthia aren't ones to complain, especially not to a human like herself. The lesson progresses without a hitch. At one point, Ray is made to demonstrate how to hold a conversation and maintain eye contact. Rather ironic considering the morning's events. But despite what you may think, she models it flawlessly. And then, just as soon as it started, the workshop is over. Ray's students leave, and for the first time today, she's able to sit down and catch her breath. But even this is short-lived since before long it's time for her to get back up and prepare for the next session. The second class of the day is a bit more involved, partially because it's a bigger group and also because it covers more advanced material. There's a bit more involved, but nothing Ray can't handle. Still, it would be nice if she didn't have to cart the resources to and from storage every time. You'd think Denetics of all companies would be able to afford multiple sets. The trolley is wider than it is tall, taking up most of the hallway. It's a wonder it manages to fit through the doors. A long time ago, there was a worker whose job it was to transport it, but now Ray has to do it herself. The trolley is somewhat hard to manoeuvre, so it's a slow and laborious trip. However, on the last corner, Ray always pushes that extra bit harder just to gain some speed on the home straight. 
Ray isn't even halfway around that bend though when all of a sudden there's a huge crash and the cart is almost tipped on its side. Some idiot has ran full tilt into the side of the trolley. Seriously, the nerve of some people. This is a hospital for crying out loud. Ray peers out from the other side, fully expecting to see someone or something sprawled out on the floor. Imagine her surprise when she sees a scruffy man with turquoise hair getting up from the ground as if nothing had happened. Wait, I remember you, she starts to say. The man takes one look at her, turns on his heel and walks briskly away. What's his problem, Ray wonders to herself, bending down to examine the already rickety cart. Just behind the front wheel, Ray spies a silver ball. Stop, you dropped something, she yells out to the man. She bends down to pick it up. It's ice cold to the touch and eerily smooth. It feels as if it should be slippery, yet at the same time it clings to her fingers. Static fills Rachel's ears and her vision narrows. All at once, Ray feels like she is falling, but not backwards or down, no. Ray feels as if she is hurtling forward through space, light and sound blurring around her. Ray's field of view gets smaller and smaller until only a pinprick of light remains. And then for a brief moment, there is nothing. Ray opens her eyes. Mere inches away from her face is a stranger with glowing red pupils and pearlescent grey skin. Ray screams. And that's enough for today. Yeah, I know as far as cliffhangers go, this is an annoying one. Sorry. <laughs> Regardless, I really hope you enjoyed this part. Don't forget to tell me what you think in the comments below. And if you're feeling like it, give the video a thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed, I would love it if you joined me here. I upload a new video every weekend on Sundays. Thank you so much for watching. It has been lovely, and I'll catch you in another video sometime soon.